thank you all for hanging out. This turnout is amazing um, for such a late in the pre, you know, late in the conference situation. So I'm very pleased to share this with you all. As Rosemary said, I'm a research associate with Colorado State University, and I'm in that capacity. I'm embedded full time with the National Park Service. So those are the folks I'm working with day to day. Um, I think most of you probably know the Park Service, um, specifically the United States National Park Service. It's hundreds of sites across uh, all states, all occupied territories, and where the public can experience natural, cultural heritage and amazing places. Everyday rangers at the parks attempt to shed light on the stories of these lands as best as they can. The team I work on is tasked with creating the web native maps for the website, mps.gov, distinct from but hopefully related to the print brochure maps uh, many uh, park service visitors are most familiar with. Every park has a maps page, and shown here is the uh, the maps page for Yosemite National Park. Uh, additional examples of stuff that we work on include uh, maps for specific states, like this map for the, the Colorado state page. Uh, we also provide tools for uh, web authors out at the parks and the programs, um, interpretive staff, to make their own basic interactive maps with a tool uh, called MP Map Builder. It's been around for a while. Um, and sometimes we partner with a park or a program to develop a custom map to address a specific need beyond the basic feature set that MP Map Builder uh, supports. So this, uh, this map for Juan Batista de Anza National Historic Trail has several interactive layers that can be toggled on and off. Uh, these maps are all built on Park Tiles, which is our data and cartography system, and MPMapJS, our code library, which was originally built on Leaflet, and we're currently transitioning the code base to be built on top of MapLibre. So that's, um, that's sort of a cross-section of, of our work, uh, what we're doing. Uh, I want to talk specifically about the journey I'm on right now, which is to better center accessibility in our design work. I want to share my story about how I got started on this journey and the work I've set in motion. And I want to take a moment to, that I must emphasize that I'm not an expert on accessibility by any, by any stretch. I consider myself a student, and I do welcome input and feedback about the things that I'm presenting here today. Um, I'll provide my email address at the end of the talk. Um, uh, you know, and though I'm not an expert on this, I think at a certain point you just have to start trying. You just have to start getting stuff out there. So rewind to NASIS 2023, one year ago. Pittsburgh, and uh, you know you don't have to try to read the text there. Uh, just for demonstration purposes, this is my notebook, much like this one, and I took a lot of notes, furious notes, while attending the uh, the diversity, equity, and inclusion panel on disability and accessibility. So my advice, if you want to jumpstart your work on accessibility and making your maps more accessible. These are the folks you want. You need to listen to. Um, find this on the NASIS YouTube channel. Uh, look up Frank Ilavsky. Uh, I might have mispronounced his last name. At Carnegie Mellon University. Um, and the following Saturday, uh, I also um, attended the the accessibility workshop that Saturday. That was incredible and introduced me to some of the tools and techniques um, I would be using in the year ahead. So um, I wanted to provide a shout out to these folks. Vanessa Kanopka Wetzel, who just in the previous uh, session also claimed not to be an expert on, on accessibility, but she's an expert to me, so too bad. Um, also Rob Roth, Travis White, and Tom Sinat, uh, 
I just appreciated that they were able to share these materials with us and I learned a lot. And I left Pittsburgh resolved to have something tangible to share at Tacoma a year later. I wanted to challenge myself to apply what I had learned at NASIS and make Park Service maps work better for everyone. And to begin, I needed to, ask, to assess current conditions and ask how are, our, how are our web maps performing. But I already had a sense that we had a lot of room for improvement. About four months before NASIS 2023, we received this f feedback from a frustrated user. I won't read the whole thing, but I do want to uh, focus on the second paragraph um, where they say, quote, I recommend trying to find trail status data using the park site to gauge the level of frustration for users. If you're not frustrated enough, try it again with your eyes closed or imagine that you have a tremor resulting in poor hand slash mouse control. Basic park planning information should be available to all, end quote. And I added the emphasis there with the last sentence. So reading this feedback convinced me that the work needed to start now. I would reprioritize my work tasks and make sure we start to remediate this. So applying what I'd picked up in Pittsburgh, I took one of our maps, like this one of the Oregon Trail, and navigated it with the screen reader NVDA. Some deficiencies quickly emerged. After the maps header element there, there's, there's no title for the map itself. The map is placed on the page in an iframe, which, has, which doesn't have good uh, ARIA support for alt text. Compounding the problem, the buttons inside the iframe lack ARIA tags. The map itself cannot be easily controlled by a keyboard. You can't tab to interactive map features and select them. Uh, using a color contrast checker, the search icon there in the upper right hand corner of the map, which is uh, this orange magnifying glass, fails WCAG color uh, contrast standards. So in summary, navigating our maps with a screen reader was an illuminating and frustrating experience. With even the most basic testing, I now had a very real sense of how far we needed to go to make our, our maps more usable by the public. And there's no time like the present. And you know, even if you're new to this and it's uncomfortable, it's important to take action and I'd be reminding my, myself of this in the months ahead. So to begin, I'd be taking two parallel approaches. Um, one would make use of existing tools and wouldn't require coding and consist of staff outreach and coordination. This would help us begin to address the alt text issue at least. The other approach would involve collaborating with my developer colleagues to modify our user interface components to be more accessible. So starting with alt text, um, we're starting with many of the maps that the Park Service staff members have made using MP Map Builder. Since iframes don't have an alt text tag, we're placing descriptions immediately below the map element. This, is, this has the added benefit of making the content available to all map users the descriptions can help them better understand the maps they're, they're interacting with. There are currently 1,318 pages on mps.gov with 884 staff produced maps. Descriptions are not enabled for all maps and of those descriptions that have been written, many were not written to serve as alt text. And up to this point, we haven't provided guidance on best practices for map descriptions. So there's considerable variation in quantity and quality. So first I need to step into that void and create some of that long needed guidance for our fellow staff members for writing alt text for interactive maps. And in this, we're aiming for concise summary, um, a concise summary that at the very least can contextualize the map on the page and help someone understand why it's there. What is the main point or argument the map is making? What features does it highlight and reveal? We ask writers to be concise, descriptive, and try to use non-technical language, understandable at a grade nine or lower language ability. 
I also came up with a basic template to follow and provided examples. Um, and with the guidance in place, I could begin reaching out to the staff. I presented to a large virtual meeting attended by web authors across the agency. I followed up with emails tailored to each author, listing the maps they've made that need attention. And I'm also developing a process where I can periodically check and see how we're progressing. And since we launched this program over the summer, we've added alt text to 268 pages, or 20% of the total. So there's a long ways to go, but it's a start at least. Um, shown here is an example of alt text written by one of our web authors who made the map. Um, I've provided a link here. So you know, you, when you get the slide deck, which I posted, it should be on Slack. The PDF should be on Slack. So check that out. You can get the link to it. You can pull up the page. And the idea here is uh, in the screenshot here, you can see that the, the, the description follows the, uh, the map element. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I'm also collaborating with the developers on my team to make the user interface components of our maps more accessible. We aim to provide an alternate means for users of, of screen readers to access the key interactive data in the map. We've started to build a data summary feature that will alert users to the types and quantities of map features contained. And in the months, uh, in the months ahead, so we've started that process, and in the months ahead, uh, we'll go further to start uh, providing links to download data in tabular form for use in spreadsheet software, and also the ability to toggle between a map and table view right there in the map element. So next, I'm going to provide some uh, visual examples of this a little later in the talk. But first, I'm just going to start with this. I wanted to take a moment to highlight one example of a, of a Park Service staff member out there who built their own table view to complement the map view using existing content management system tools and without any prompting from our team. What they've done here helps illustrate some of the key features we're looking to build across all MPS.gov web maps. Here, the map of campsites with its interactive campsite markers is complemented by a table view of the same data immediately below it. The table is rendered in a standards compliant, H in standards compliant HTML and it has helpful features like sorting and pagination. Data is also available to download. It's that little tiny link down there. A person with low vision or blindness can now access the same data in a non-map form, non format, and that might make it much easier for them to use. But we, wanna stand, we want these types of features built into our maps by default so that our web authors don't have to research and implement their own solutions. With standardized UI components to support accessibility, we can provide a consistent experience across the site for our users. And so in the next few slides, I'll quickly walk through our early draft designs. Um, I built this first set of wireframes in May, and we've gone through a couple iterations since then. Initially, I placed the new components outside of the map frame, but we've since moved them inside. Um, and this is this idea of being able to toggle between the map view and a, and a table view. Um, I won't spend a lot of time on this second iteration because they're very grimly bare bones, but uh, we're starting to move the components inside the map frame and we're starting to be concerned about the amount of space that we have for these elements in a mobile context. Um, so we're trying to anticipate those space constraints um, responding to a, a, a wide range of view, viewport sizes. This is starting to coalesce more where I think I want this to go. Um, we're, we've been uh, talking with the web team that runs MPS.gov more generally. And there's, there's a plan to get MPS.gov tied into the US web design system, which is produced by the 18F team out of the, at the General Services Administration. Um, and we're talking about how we can adapt our maps to incorporate the same components. So, and in doing so, we'll get accessible, standards-compliant features out of the box 
and a unified look and feel with the rest of the components on the page. So the US web design system suggests that accordions, um, that we can provide accordions if users only need a few specific pieces of content within a page. So um, I'm starting to, I'm experimenting with this idea. So in this mock-up, accessibility features can be found in the first accordion, which is called map data. Here, users uh, find, let's see, this is where I want to be. Yeah. So here, users find the map summary. This is that first element there. And then the radio buttons for toggling between the map and table views. And then there's also the data download button. Importantly, these can fit into a mobile screen as needed. So I've got the mobile screen on the right-hand side there and the desk, normal desktop view on the, on the left. So this specific map um, has layers that can be turned on and off. So we're using the design system checkboxes to support these, this. And these are all um, standards compliant. And they have like the proper ARIA tagging. And they have the visual contrast needed and the tab through um, highlighting is all dialed in. So the, the coding for the user interface components has just begun. And I hope we begin to roll out some features in the year ahead. I had to articulate the need and get buy-in from managers and colleagues. They've been very supportive of this work. The challenge really has been finding the resources and getting some space for the work in our development backlog. But honestly, that hasn't been as difficult as I anticipated. And though it was hard, certainly hard at first, to realize how deficient our maps are, now that we're on this journey, I'm really glad that we got started. And I look forward to continuing to learn how to do this and make our maps more accessible and usable for everyone. So, thank you all. Thank you, Jake. That's uh, giving yourself a challenge is applaudable. Um, we have time for any questions, a few minutes, if anybody has any questions for Jake. Yes, that's a great question. So the question is, how do you write alt text for a map? And that's, that's a really great, uh, you know, I, I've grappled with this. And there's a project out of uh, University of Hawaii, Manoa, that is doing something that's more along like uh, audio description or like uh, text descriptions of maps. And they're um, highly detailed and difficult to compose, but they do the they do that really hard work of trying to replicate the visual experience of actually interacting with a map. In this case, in a lot of the instances, uh, I believe they're starting especially with like static maps, and even with a map that isn't interactive and doesn't change, that's already a great challenge to try to like how do you take a map that's like so rich and visual and like replicate that experience. So we can't, I can't get our web authors to do that level of description. So we're trying to get at, we're trying to get past something where, like right now, some of these maps on our site, if you, if you encounter it with a screen reader, it's just sort of this like, it's this like opaque box that like the person wouldn't even know what it, what it is. So they tab through that like, that was weird. So. Now there'll be this like textual description, which I kind of think of as like closer to uh, an elevator summary or like a, just a short five to seven sentences, you know, th five sentences, whatever. I mean, it's not really about like the number of characters in it, it's, but it's more about what's here, what's in this map, what's the geographic scope, like what would you have encountered if you could experience it that way, and what's the main point of the map. Um, because like right now that they're not even understanding contextually like why we wanted to put the map on the page in the first place. So it's, it doesn't replicate the experience of using the map, 
but it at least starts to help the person understand why it's there and what the data is what data is represented there so that um, they can start to contextualize it with the rest of the page. So it's, we, we can't just do the alt text alone and consider our, our work done, but that's, it's like, it's, it's trying to chip away at it, I guess, yeah. Anybody else? Or are we, are we up, time's up? Uh, I mean, we could probably take one more if there was any. Yeah. All right, let's give Jake another round of applause. Thank you all.